Today's Mass is being offered for Harry uh, Chansey. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And Amen. with your spirit. Call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred <clears throat> mysteries. You are saying to feel the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You were sent to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of the resurrection. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you, staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God, with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad, and my tongue has exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with the joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld nor did his flesh 
see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this, we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, Lord, you will show us the path of life. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you, O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup. You it is who hold fast my lot. Lord, you will show us the path of life. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence. Because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Lord, you will show us the path of life. You will show me the path to life, abounding joy in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Lord, you will show us the path of life. <clears throat> A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke his Father, him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who, through him, believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Lord Jesus, open the scriptures to us, make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped looking downcast. One of them named Cleopas said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know all the things that has taken place there these days. And he replied to them, What sort of things? He, 
they said to him, The things that had happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deeds and words before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to be sentenced of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from the, our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was risen. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the woman had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interp interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village in which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on further. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in and stayed with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they went out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, again, our gospel returns us back to Easter. Uh, but this Sunday, we return to Easter afternoon. Uh, as we read the gospel, two of Jesus' disciples had just left Jerusalem. And they're on their way to this village just seven miles away called Emmaus. And they set out from Jerusalem heartbroken over the events of that weekend. They don't know what to make of all that took place, including the rumors that Jesus had resurrected from the dead. So along the way, a wayfarer joins them and strikes up a conversation. Now the wayfarer begins to cite scripture passages that confirm indeed that Jesus was the Messiah, and that the surrounding events that took place had been predicted by centuries of prophets. And once to get to Emmaus, the two disciples are so enchanted by this wayfarer's words, they invite him to remain and stay. They urge him, stay with us, for it's nearly evening and the day is almost over. Now the wayfarer remains, and at supper, the breaking of the bread, their eyes are open and they realize that the wayfarer is Jesus. He disappears, and they joyfully now return back to Jerusalem to tell the others. I have to ask you, 
How often has Jesus walked by our side and we didn't even know it? Their eyes were blinded to his identity. And he's walking with us some part of our life. The two disciples walking to Emmaus had no idea who it was that was walking beside them. Filled with despairing thoughts, they had been badly shaken by the events of the last few days. All their hopes and dreams of Jesus' earthly reign had come to a crashing halt that weekend. When things had been going the strongest, when their anticipation looked as if it was to be realized, everything falls apart. What had happened to that plan was the cross entered the plan. God inserted an alternative path that would explain, expand Jesus' reign, not over Israel, but to expand his reign over all of humankind. He worked in a way that these disciples had never expected because the cross and suffering had not entered into their plans. A glorious triumphant path, the earthly victory they could accept, but not a crucified Lord. As long as there was miracles and encouraging crowds, following Jesus was easy. But when the cross cast its shadow, they threw in the towel. They returned home without faith and trust that God knows what he is doing, even in the midst of sadness and loss. The two disciples were so centered on their own woes and wounds, they did not even recognize who was walking along with them. Our merciful Lord came to console them, but they did not recognize him. How often in our lowest points may God have sat with us, spoke to us, and we did not recognize him. The cross is part of every Christian's journey. Otherwise, Jesus would have not told us, if you wish to be my disciple, you must deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. Our disappointment, our sorrows, our failings are not a sign of defeat but maybe the very way our Lord is bringing about his victorious plan. We live in trying times. The cross and suffering we may be experiencing today does not point to defeat. In the darkest moment, remember our Lord is with us. We have to have absolute confidence. No matter how dark it seems, no matter how dark it may become, no matter what looks like it's shattering, we have to have absolute confidence that our Lord has us in his plans and that he'll bring it to the good. God remains in control of everything and will bring all things to the good. When things seem the darkest, when we feel a loss of faith and trust, it is precisely then that we are to turn to our Lord and say, Jesus, I trust in you. Invite Jesus to stay with you, as the disciples did on the way to Emmaus, and allow him to reveal his presence to you. Together, let us proclaim our profession of faith. <coughs> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we bring our petitions up to our loving Father. <clears throat> that God will continue to purify and renew the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will grant our civil leaders the wisdom to govern the land according to his divine will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christian families, that they will hold Christ as Lord in their hearts and homes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from the coronavirus, that God will grant them his healing touch. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our love for the Holy Eucharist will increase and we will be truly recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread at Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to fully trust in God's mercy and allow him to forgive us of our sins and heal us from our lingering shame, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, it is a great confidence that we lift our petitions to you, knowing well that for our good, you'll grant them to us. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, through the vine and work of human hands, and become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the Holy Church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted <clears throat> Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. 
just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you O Lord but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed he never ceases to offer himself for us but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you he is the sacrificial victim who dies no more the lamb once slain who lives forever Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalt in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all who have created rightly gives you praise. So through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, we to make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, and whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May his sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Paul our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. 
to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And with your spirit, Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. 